Get a good die on. Push it to the limit, I can't go no more. Red light, no way I'm coming back home. Long dirt road all on my own. I'ma be the greatest, draw my name in the stone. Run my name in the stone. Yeah, I'm coming back home. Yeah, I'm coming back home. Run my name in the stone. Cause I'm coming back home. Cause I'm coming back home. Right back where I left because I know my people needed me. Diamond in the rough, I don't know what it is they see in me. Go down as a legend in my city cause we beat the streets. Trying to spread the wealth around the block. No, I can't keep from me. Let's have some fun. Well, thank you for sitting with us. I really anytime, appreciate man, it. Anytime, man. Anytime. Really appreciate it. Um, first thing I want to ask, the nickname. I love the nickname. Where did it come from? Nickname. Nickname comes from a time that the, the fame was now bullying, was wildly accepted. It wasn't even this word didn't even exist. Yeah. A math teacher, when I was a little kid, because for Brazilian standards, I'm I'm very uh, my 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 skin is very white, and I have a little bit of like a dark, you know, yeah. thing. I still this day, you know. And I was a really skinny kid, small, and uh, I used to talk a lot. I was like one of those kids in, in, in class that was always like you know in trouble. And then this guy all of a sudden stopped. Hey, you, kid, you like you really weird, kid. You look like a little vampire, a little Dracula. So I'll call you Draculinho because in Brazil, Inho, Inho means like small Dracula. Yeah. And everybody, ah, yeah. And then he goes like Draculinho, the guy, like the, the teacher. Yeah. It's probably this guy today would be, would be fucked, you know? <laughs> yeah, but uh, like back more. in the day, like I could eat his papers and stuff. And then like, uh, he, uh, and he kept going and then I didn't like it. Of course I didn't like it. You know, I remember I got in a fight after school with a kid because of that. I was getting on my nerves, I got in a fist fight. And, uh, and then it stick for some reason, and I cannot tell you why, I don't know, from Draculino transformed in Draculino, which is kind of more a Spanish version. Yeah. Man, and now nowadays, yeah, even my mom say like, oh, I'm Draculino's mom. She doesn't even say my name. She just called my name when she's mad. <laughs> Only when you're bad. Right? Yeah, which is bad. When she says Vinicius, yeah. it's like, oh shit, there's something happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know? Yeah. I, I yeah. remember seeing a, you teaching a video on YouTube like 12, 14 years, a long time ago. Uh huh. And uh, I was like, Jackie Bruno, you know, that dude must have been a badass. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was just like, I was watching, I was like, I'm going to watch this guy's video. Like, everybody, everybody always thinks like uh, when I used to teach in Brazil. Uh, in the different town in Rio, Belo Horizonte, where I have my school, they still have it there. It's still there since 1995. A lot of people start to hear my name. And then everybody who would go there to try a class, father was like you. Yeah. A big, strong, muscular guy. And then he got there, they saw like a, <laughs> like a 140 guy, 135 guy. They're skinny, like little Dracula, and people say, <laughs> you should be like, yeah, it's me. <laughs> here I am. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. So you grew up in Rio? Yes, grew up in Rio. Born and raised in Rio. I moved to Belo Horizonte when I was already 24 years old. So I got my black belt and then I, like, maybe a year after I went to Belo Horizonte to have my own school. Gotcha. You know, by and that was Rio. that was the first Gracie school outside of Rio. Yes. Sir. How did yes, that? Sir. How did you get that opportunity? Man, that, that's a cool story too. Um, Mr. Carlinhos in '95, that they had the first Pan American Championships here in, in, in LA, and uh, I was lucky enough to be one of the few black belts that, used, that were competing. There was not many, but uh, I won my division. There was a I went one class above and I beat this guy. This guy actually like really good friends of Subaru, Yamazaki. Fernando Yamazaki. He's like a he comes from a judo background. Okay. And uh, but anyway, I beat this guy and uh, and after the tournament, Kalinos told me, say, hey, drop me, let me tell you this. This is the beginning of something really big. I was like, yeah, I was like almost getting my, my law degree because I'm a lawyer too. I finished my, my law degree studies. I was about to finish and uh, I was kind of like in the limbo of what to do. I had like still, I, I had my daughter, my little my daughter was like not even one year old. And I was kind of like deciding what to do, you know, like 
or shoot the, the, the law or just dive in into Jiu-Jitsu and say, look, I just told me, look, you have the profile to be with us, to be part of something huge. Because I know for a fact that after this, Gracie Baja and Jiu-Jitsu itself will explode. Yeah. Then I believe him. And thank God I did. Yeah. And they said, like, we're going to spread for all over the world. Let's start in Brazil. And then this will, and sure enough, man, this was 1995. So it was like, uh, how many years ago? 26 years ago? Yeah, 26. 26 years ago. And then look at us now. Yeah. We are in every single part of the world. Like, Gracie Baja has 900 schools. 900? That's crazy. It's and, awesome. Man. Yeah. It, girl, and, right? and man, like, uh, all started like I was there, nobody told me. It was just a little bit of like a, a few of us in, in Baja da Tijuca. Baja da Tijuca was like a, not even the main uh, neighborhoods are real, yeah. not the most well known. It was kind of like, kind of like emerging, starting, you know. There was Ipanema, Copacabana, all these places. You've been yeah. to Brazil, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Baja back in the day was kind of like. A little remote, you know what yeah, I mean? You gotta go over that little path. Yeah, you have to, yeah, you didn't have the the bypass yes and all that. And then uh Carlinhos decided to go there also as a visionary, you know. So man like uh Carlinhos, one thing that he has, let me tell you, maybe his main uh gift is that he sees the future big time. Let me tell you. Yeah. He used to say stuff, and I remember people around us who laughed at like, man, God, he's crazy, he's never gonna make it. Like that, he's like, man, I remember saying that. Probably like 89, 90. We would do tournaments in America with a thousand athletes, and people, <laughs> <laughs> Look at it now. People, man, like a thousand athletes, that was like a small I open know. tournament yeah. for that BJJF. Like a Houston Open has. Houston thousands. Open has a thousand stuff. Every a thousand, weekend, thousand, too, every, you know. Yeah. All over the world. Yeah. And then, like, the guys were laughing. And then, like, I never did. But, I was, of course, I was kind of like, man, I hope. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. And now, man, and he always says, now he says other stuff. So, I was like, man, you know. Who knows? I better listen to him. That's because, right. I mean, so far, he was right in everything. You know, he said about Jiu-Jitsu being organized. He said about the money in Jiu-Jitsu. How it got, the money in Jiu-Jitsu would come. And he was right, it's like the money jujitsu will come with people buying pay-per-views. Yeah. Professional jujitsu will survive from people buying pay-per-views, yeah. like a UFC. Yeah. Back in the day. And sure enough, like Fro Black is a giant right. now because everybody has to pay for it. Subscription. Long subscriptions. Yeah. You know, and he was right. Again, like yeah. they're paying well for this for the, 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 the fighters because of the only way is that it's not sponsors. Sponsors not. Yeah. I mean it's good, but you cannot count on sponsors for the rest of your life. You have to have a self-sustainable yeah. thing, you know? So No, I think it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. He's definitely a visionary and you know, a spearhead for the, the growth of the sport. Yeah, yeah. and then like world, uh so. can you imagine what he went through to go? his own family, you know how the Gracie family is, to go in their own family and get all these conflicts with, man, like Carson, with like the, 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 the guys from Helios side. Yeah. He, 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 let me tell you, he deserved everything he has because it wasn't easy. Exactly. I, and I'm telling you because I was there, I witnessed everything. Yeah. Like all the conflicts, all the drama, all the, 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 the people playing against, you know, like people kind of sabotaging. Not necessarily his family, but a bunch of other people, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then like look at them now. You know? It's that's crazy. that's a winner there, let me tell you. And I'm really proud to where where we at right now. Yeah. You know, to come from that to see everything going on. I'm really blessed to to, sure. to have witnessed all this, you know, yep. and, uh, and, uh, and having believed on it. Yeah, I mean, you girl, know. when I first started, Gracie Baja was everywhere already. Not already. everywhere, but yeah, if but it was already. It, it yes. was a big name already. You yeah, know? like I yeah. started training Gracie Baja here, Gracie Baja down there. It was like it was for me. That was like they must be the best. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. they got all the schools and it, it's, so. it's 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 kind of like man, like uh, nobody can stop growth. Sure. But with growth, there's a lot of challenges too, you yeah. know? Sure. So now they're like starting to get, put their minds together on more quality control too. Mm -hmm. 
you know, like, I mean, they are already, like, Gracie Buy is still, like, I have a record on the digital market in regards to students, uh, instructor certifications, and sure. and everybody has to have background check, and, and they, you know, it, 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 you have to do a course that takes, like, months. It's, it's, it's good, you know, but still getting a point that they'll be able to have all these massive numbers of schools and everybody kind of aligned together in a really, really good, like, uh, quality top quality you know it's yeah. tough you yeah, know it's, it's tough it's very to manage right? you know even i'm pretty sure that silver has to deal with that silver has to have some uh, some uh, affiliations that is not as good or serious or follow the method as you yeah. guys do you know it's yeah. it's part of the game you over know? the years there's been like this you know what i mean yeah up, you got and then there's a few guys gone for yeah different reasons yeah, whatever, people, you know, yeah. yeah people yeah people so it's but he's soup. He's like that. It's it's got to be orderly. Everybody's yeah. got to be on the same page. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Quality control is a big thing. Right? Yeah. Especially for gradings. For know, grading. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That that's that. huge. Yeah. That has to be because that what everything can go south. That's right. That, right. That shows your product. You know what I mean? The quality of your gradings. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Well, let's go back to the beginning there. Like, yeah, I was reading somewhere that you were into surfing. Yeah, and that's how you got into jujitsu. Believe it or not, I used to do judo when I was a little little kid. But uh, what took me to jujitsu was surfing, because I used to surf in a spot in Rio, in Baja, the Tijuca, that is called Quebra Mar. Quebra Mar is kind of like they have like a jetty, some rocks at the end of Baja before you go to the to, to the south uh, south zone of Rio. He used to surf there, and then my neighbors were Hanzo, Half, Hyan, Master Carlinhos just opened in the 80s, the school there. So Jiu Jitsu was just like, oh, the Gracie family is here. So we got to know each other, my neighbors, and you know, uh, one thing led to the other. And then like, I started to train because of surfing, because the friends that I made surfing. Yeah. And uh, also there's another guy called Tachela Jordan Pitoko, his nickname is Pitoko. He's really good friends of Hanzo and everybody else. Really good surfer and really badass in Jiu Jitsu too. He was nice. a purple belt, but already like a, he was big for this Brazilian standard, tough, you know, mm -hmm. and started training him too. So one thing led to the other, and uh, this was in, in Jiu Jitsu. I think I started training Jiu Jitsu when I was 13 to 14. And this was like around 84, 85. So you guys were all teenagers back then? Teenagers, yeah, we're all teenagers. And uh, I remember that. Uh, that group from the beach that went to be the core of Gracie Bay with me, Alf. Uh, Hanzo was a little older than us, so especially when you're that young, like uh, if you're 18, you don't want to hang out with like a 14, you know what I mean? So he's kind of like two, you know, like two another, with another crowd. But it was like me, Alf, uh, Hyan, even though I was young, but I was always wild. And nobody his age would hang with him. <laughs> so we had Elio Soneca, we have Daniel Gracie, we have like uh, 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 Alexander Soka. All these people, all, all of us were like on this on this neat group and well, more people, but we were surfers there and friends that kind of like made, start to train. We love surfing, but we start to train because it was cool, it was, it was nice and all that. Man, everybody, all, all the names that I told you today, they all live they feed their families to Jiu Jitsu. We yeah. were always, we dove in head first. Yeah. No, that no, little no. core group, you know? It was a small school, man. Like, man, like back in the day, they had like maybe 50 students. That's it. Like 60 students. When the months are really good, that was it. Who was so, coaching in front of the Whenever we started training on that time, the main coaches were the Machado brothers. Yeah. Most likely Carlos. Carlos is in Dallas. Carlos is uh, uh, the pioneer of Jiu Jitsu here in Texas because yeah. of Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris took him here. Yeah. 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 So Carlos Machado was the main. Carlos Machado and Higgins Machado were the, the main uh, uh, teachers. They were already black belts when I started to train there. John Jack, one of my main teachers, also like uh, John Jack was purple. Uh, Johnny Machado was purple or like about to get the purple from the blue. And Roger Machado was brown, if I'm not mistaken. Roger is the second oldest. Uh, and it, 
the main teachers were Jack, Jack used to help, was kind of like an instructor. He used Cobra sometimes, and the main guys were Carlos and, and Higgins. But Carlinhos, Master Carlinhos used to come kind of like once a week, just to go there and train, you know? He had ownership of the school, but he wasn't very active. I think he was getting a divorce back in the, in the day. But we always knew him, but he wasn't our gotcha. main, main teacher. And then uh, the first one to leave was Higgin. He got left to the U.S. with Horio, and then they they parted ways after whatever. But uh, he left really, really early. I think he even left, if I'm not mistaken, like around man, maybe like 87, 88. Higan was the first of the Machado to go. Then Higan went. Then Johnny went. Then everybody was going, and then pretty much we just had uh, John Jack. Yeah. Staying and Jack is like I don't need to talk. Yeah, yeah. Jack is a legend. Yeah, Jack yeah. like he has the the thing on his end, but man, let me tell you, that was arguably one of the most incredible and technical guys that I've ever had the chance to train with and learn from. He was amazing. And then he got his black belt. Eventually, he was the main professor. So Carlinhos, Master Carlinhos, start to teach again twice a week. Because Jean Jacques was the main guy. And then, like, uh, they used to split, like, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Jean Jacques, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Carlinhos. And you have to kind of pick the, the, the professor, your professor. You have to kind of choose, like, when you pay the membership and say, oh, I trained Carlinhos, or, or I trained Jean Jacques. Gotcha. And because we're students of Jean Jacques, we're, straight, we're training with Jean Jacques, and I didn't have the money to pay them all. But uh, I was a here the blue belt and Carlinhos always said, oh no, we can train for free, no problem, it's okay. So you can train every day. I know you like to train every day, blah, blah, blah. So me, Gordon, and a couple of other guys, Carlinhos let us train for free, you know? And then that's how I started my connection with Maestro Carlos. And Jack was like younger and, the, and, and fighter and the main coach. So we kind of like competition training, all that kind of stuff. And Carlinhos was always like on the more, uh, philosophical side of it like giving us really good advice the, the way that he teaches is kind of more he teaches you how to fish instead of giving you the fish fried already yeah, you know what i mean yeah. so it was different different uh different teaching styles you know and that was great for me I was, yeah. you know and i remember man back in the, those days sometimes you're in the mats and now you think about it you're like and then you see helium race carlinhos crawling race hands uh, uh, John Jack, Higa, yeah. Carlos, and uh, who else? And a bunch of Nelson Monteiro. All yeah. this guy, everybody on the mats, like, and, and, and now guys, I see. Were, were they already famous and big names, or were you guys just all of them? You were small. Yeah. The whole thing was small. I mean, the Gracie family name in Brazil was always strong. Yeah. They were always, like, very influential, you know? But the Jiu Jitsu scene, like I said, in the 80s, Man, we're pretty much being swallowed by judo, and it was also like the the, the kickboxing, yeah. kickboxing movies, Bruce Lee movies, yeah, that kind of Jean thing. Claude so, and, and. man, you had to like kill a lion a day. Yeah. You know, I remember like I used to get in in, in fights inside the gym because people would just come and see us roll. They said, "Right, this is jitsu. This is shitty. This doesn't work." You know, I punch you in the face. That kind of. Thing. What kind of thing people say, yeah. you know, and I remember me skinny, man, that they like to put me because yeah, I was kind of like street smart kid, but skinny said they want to prove a point, yeah. you know, so it was a couple of times, man, remember that guy, this guy, man, this guy, he was an adult, he was a Hare Krishna, believe it or not, that's supposed to be peaceful, Yeah, yeah. he was vicious, he wanted to rip my head off, <laughs> and I was a kid, he was an adult, you know, and, 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 and then like the guy was talking so much crap, like watching the class, that I think it was Carlinhos. Carlinhos gave me the most of the biggest lesson. He said, oh, I really, you, you really think that? Oh, okay. Why don't you do that? Why don't you try to beat up that little kid in there? Why don't you try? He goes like, that little kid? Don't kill that little kid. Come on. I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not a coward. I'm not a coward. He said, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. He can handle himself. Just go there and try to do what, what you think is going to work with him. And then long story short, like, yeah, it didn't work. No. Yeah. And then he joined the school. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Like maybe there's something to this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm glad that he joined because some people still live in the in the fantasy that they're tough, but yeah. they're not. 
you know. Yeah. I always tell my students, like one of my favorite, I wish I had this on film. I had a guy come in, he's a big military guy, 6'2", 230 pounds, super jacked. Super jacked. You know? I got six years of combatives, I got this, I got that. You know, he's just rattling all this stuff off. Like, That's great. Fantastic. Good, good, good for you, right? So we're, we're training that night and I'm looking around, I'm like, who can I put this guy with? You know? yeah. So I put him in a group of three with a 15 year old kid who was about, he was gonna get his blue belt soon, uh -huh. and like a 20 year old guy. They're both 140 pounds, little, little guys. Little you know? guys. And I'm like, they can take care of him, you know. So yeah. I put him in that circle and they're, they're like rotating in and out, you know, two minutes on to get the new guy to Yeah, 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 yeah. These kids just choked him, choked him, choked him, choked him. And, and like, the more they choked him, the harder he fought. He's like folding oh, yeah. these yeah. kids in half and yeah. spinning them around. Yeah. They're on his back. Because they got frustrated. Yeah, and he's just like yeah. looking at me with his hands up there. Like, <laughs> what is going on over here? Yeah, bro. I'm just sitting there loving it. Well, he joined. Yeah, oh yeah, he joined. So that's still good, because the guy was humble yeah. enough yeah. To, to do it. Because some yeah. people, they do that and they leave. And they, they prefer to still live in, in, in ignorance, you know? Yeah. No, he's like he's denying the truth. You know what I mean? Like people live in this fantasy world. Oh yeah, they you don't know? want they don't want to face it. Yeah, face oh yeah. Music. And yeah. then like and then like coming back like I was talking. Yeah, so then, then the Machados, and then yeah, and then and then Jean Jacques also left. So Jean Jacques, this was 1992 around that when Jean Jacques left. So he was the last of the Machados to go. So when he left, we. All, all that core group that was training more with Jack, everybody went to Carlinhos and Carlinhos has his own students. So man, there was like probably the golden era of Racing Bob. Yeah. Because everybody was training every day under the same roof. And remember that Carlinhos was really like exciting yeah. because it had so many people. I remember on those days, it was, the school had probably like 120 students, 100 students, which is, was huge, huge for the yeah, time, yeah. you know, and, and, yeah. and man, like, that's when, like around 1993, 1994, we started to build the generation that finally could beat Carson Gracie school in tournaments, because Carson used to dominate all the tournaments, like yeah. 70s, 80s, and early 90s, it wasn't even close. They he was honest, they crushed crush competition. Yeah. They, it was their thing. Yeah. And Carson was, you know, legendary coach. Yeah. One of the best fighters ever. Yeah. And uh, I remember that our generation started to train so hard and have so much of a big rivalry with those guys that we started to beat them. Yeah. And I remember, like, uh, on the national championships of 1994, we lost the team medal for them for three points. Right. Three. It was just four. one gold medal, like that. one silver medal. Mm -hmm. That was it. And then we were like, man, we can do it, you know? So in 95, all the way to the early 2000s, we took over yeah. our generation. Yeah. You know? So I'm really proud of that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and, and I'm really proud to be part of that because it was something that back in the day nobody could imagine, man. Yeah. Mike Matthew could be Carson School. Carson School just crushes. Yeah, it's legendary, right? Exactly. It's to this day. You know, yeah, it was about really good, really good time. So uh, that's why, that's how Gracie Barr started to be what it is today. That's when Carlinhos was inspired, not just teaching, but with ideas. Then the Federation, the, the, the National Federation came in 94. And then the International Federation came in the, I think, early 2000s. The tournament started to develop, you know, like a media used to come to us bad and good. Yeah, yeah. Because of the pit boy or whatever. But but uh, that's when the boom started, I think, yeah, for the first UFC. UFC took yes, off. first UFC. Yeah. That's I, when I, I have to always say that. We, we have to all be grateful to Hoist Gracie. Yeah. Yep. And it doesn't matter what you say. That guy brought and hardened for being the head to make, to create the UFC. Yeah. We all have to be really glad to this guy. Yeah. I remember, you know, I was like 13, I think, that yeah. night. I grew up watching boxing, loved yeah. boxing, Mike Tyson, you know, uh -huh. every well, everybody audience, like me right? too. Yeah, yeah. Mike Tyson, yeah. Vander Holyfield, those guys. Yeah. I saw that UFC one and was like, someday, I'm gonna learn that. I gotta learn that. I was like, that is And what happened to you happened to millions of people. Yeah, yeah. We knew it already. Yeah, you guys did. There's nothing where and, I and, was, and But know? what surprised us is that Hoist was kind of like, for Brazilian standards, 
he wasn't known because I think he left to, to the U.S. very young. I think it was 17 or 16 that Horan took him to be like, uh, to, to, to take care of his kids. Yeah. And then like, there was an internet, there was a phone, there was nothing. Yeah. So people kind of forgot about him. Like, oh, there's, there's a brother. Yeah, the Hoyler's brother, the guy Hoyce, but man, all of a sudden he won the whole thing. It was like, whoa, man. Yeah. Like a monster being created in a garage or yeah. something. <laughs> this whole yeah. time, right? Yeah. yeah, and it was great because, I mean, he was a skinny guy and like looked like a regular standard guy. He didn't look, he wasn't Hickson. Hickson looks. Yeah, he looked the part. Even though he's not the biggest one, but Hickson looks like a samurai. Yeah. Big neck, yeah. strong. Yeah. And, you know, he feel the aura, but Hoyce, man, was like a surfer. Like, like this, you know, like looks me, but I mean, kind of very like an ordinary Just guy, long guy yeah. with the gi yeah. and you know, that was, that was perfect, man. Everything happened for a reason. The, the world didn't see that coming. No, yeah. oh, not at all, not at all. And I, I would tell you more, if they put Hickson, Hickson would do even better than Hoist, but Hickson yeah. was way better than Hoist yeah. back in the day. There are no questions about it, sure. but I, I don't think you would put us on a map as much. Yeah. It was shocking, like for me, not knowing anything exactly. about jiu-jitsu, yeah. never heard of this my entire life, just a kid, seeing this guy, like. Remember when he beat this uh, guy, and then when he beat the, uh, then Seven. Yeah. Because everybody was saying, man, like, when these jiu-jitsu guys go against- The wrestlers. The wrestler, they'll be trouble. Yeah. They trouble. Yeah. And it wasn't the case, man. He went there and choked the guy, yeah. Yeah. everybody, and whoa. Kimo too. That big dude, Kimo. He got his oh, true, yeah, right. yeah, that was a good one too. Yeah. Kimo came to like oh, yeah, rip his heart off. Yeah, he was game. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, we can never forget how his grace is. So this was all like a, I would say the perfect storm. Yeah, yeah. like early nineties. Came together. All the the universe conspired to to show the world who you were because it was just small stuff. Yeah. You know, like it's small in the, in the sense that it was done in Rio, a couple of small cities in Brazil, but it was something small. Yeah. And that was a worldwide phenomenon. It is, <laughs> and, and continuing to grow. Oh yeah, right? everywhere. Little towns all around the country, all around the world. All over the world, schools. man. We have yeah. jiu-jitsu, we have jiu-jitsu. Man, in the Middle East, think about it. Yeah. You know, like you have jiu-jitsu in, in like, schools. Yeah, like, a, like a Siberia. You know, like, it's great. It's awesome. Yeah, I love thank it. God. I like watching you grow. Yeah, yeah for it's sure. good for all of And you're still gonna win, there's a lot of this. Yeah, I know, you know? just the beginning. Right? It's just the beginning, yeah. 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 I just hope like, everything goes smooth. It's like you said, guys are feeding their families off of it. I'm one of them. You know yeah, what I mean? I yeah, run a school yeah, full yeah, time. Yeah, all of us, family. exactly, yeah, exactly, so exactly. Thankful for it. Yeah, that's, but guys like you here are the majority, and we really appreciate that. It just makes me really like mad on people that are kind of trying to to sh pretty much excuse me my French but shit on the history, not giving props to people who paved the whole way, not respecting them. I'm not saying that it has to be a little cast and to be like a co kind of thing, but man, come on, how are you not going to respect like whoever can? I'm like the biggest fan of Eddie Gracie, Carlos Gracie, Carson Hickson. Everybody, ever, I man, I'm never gonna shit on those guys. Come on, no way. Yep. You know, yep. and what this some of the kids are doing is exactly that. They're shitting on this guy. They're, like, yep. they're all wrong. And I've seen there it will too. be blue belts nowadays or purple belts or whatever. Al Hickson would be a mere purple belt nowadays. And even if you think about that, how do you say that? I know. It's crazy. Man, it's so disrespectful. Yep. And all they do is compete, they don't even fight. Back in the day, well, some thought, of them, you know. some of them would be like, uh, the, the, when we talk about this lap on the face, <laughs> some of them get guys lap on the face and turn their, their turn and cry or call the cops. You know? Yeah, run anyway. for help. It is no, what I, it is. I'm Human with, being, right? Human I think being. they're the pioneers, right? You got to respect it because without 100%. it, we wouldn't have what we have. A hundred percent. In my yeah. school, we got a, a forty foot wall, four foot tall mural of all the grandmasters. That's cool, you know what I mean? Like that's that was cool. one thing I definitely wanted in new place. You know, and that's gonna come back it. to you, even though it's natural for you, it comes back to us eventually in the long run. Yeah. You don't build a legacy being an asshole. Yeah. You can be super, super successful. You can be uh, 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 rich. You can be famous being an asshole and doing all wrong things. Sure. But man, 
when you're not the top dog anymore, you yeah. fucked. Excuse me, my French. Yeah. Because there's gonna be young lions dying to eat you alive and you don't have a backup because you don't have a legacy. Because nobody likes you because you close all the doors. I've seen this happening so many times, man. So many times. So many times. And, and, and I learned that, man, the legacy is more important than the moment. You have to think about the long run. You know what I mean? If you mean and bad and, and asshole and, 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 and not grateful, you're going to end up alone. Sure. You know, and when you're alone and old, man, it's kind of like an old lion. The old lion has to be have the young lions close to you, otherwise they do. Right. <laughs> the they young lions respect you, care about you. No, I hear you. Burning bridges, man. It's no, it's no, no I, I think good. it's terrible. Yeah, you don't want to be old and lonely. People think about five minutes ahead of them. People are crazy. Yeah, bad. Choices. I don't understand it. The way of the world, I guess. Yeah, for, for some people. Human being, human being. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So back to Gracie Baja down huh? there in Iguate Tijuca. Uh -huh. um, who was, like, what was it like training in that group? You got 120 guys, all these future legends of the sport. I mean, was it just savage training? Magic, every magic. Day? Was set. It, was a, it was tough training. We we're more fighters than athletes. Yeah. So I'm gonna tell you that there wasn't like a lot of technology involved in methods of training and all that kind of stuff. The judo guys were already more because of the Olympics and all that. But uh, we were really fighters in the heart. And I remember one thing that was really clear for me back in, in this time is that what mattered the most for our mess, our teachers and, and the team, what mattered the most was this. You know, yeah. like we, tr we we were really uh, 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 putting everything to not let our team go down or, or, or let anybody down. We 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 give our lives. Yeah, we would oh, cry yeah. when we tapped. We would like refuse to tap. We, it, it was a, like a like a big bride for what we do. That we what we represented to never give up and and a kind of death before this honor kind of thing, you know, like that was really big and like a samurai spirit. And I think this comes a lot with Gracie themselves, like Ellie Gracie, Karsh, and all this, these guys and uh, all these masters. And uh, I think it was like the difference between now and then is that nowadays I have a lot of professionals, which is great. I'm glad that it changed and it's not small anymore and there's money involved and I love that, I'm not. I one of those guys, oh, back in my day it was bad. I'm not one of those guys, you know? Yeah. But uh, I think what's lacking a little more nowadays that we had back then is the true love, you know? Because there was there was no money. Yeah. There was no fame. There was no internet. There was no media. There was nothing. Yep. We did it because you love it. Fought for the flag of jiu-jitsu, right? Yes. Yeah. Man, like, the main teachers of Jiu Jitsu, the Gracie family, they all like, uh, not broke, but I mean, they, they had really humble livings because there was no money on the thing. Yeah. You know, like, so it was for the love. They, they held the flag no matter what, and it good and bad, and you had to respect that. Yeah. Nowadays yeah. it's very, it's easier in a way that man, like, if you're good, you're gonna get paid well. You're gonna be famous, you know? Yeah. You're gonna have a lot of opportunities. You have a good life. Of Come course, it's all, it, we have to train hard and work for it. Yeah, but it's a different level, you know. And I think back in the day, I think what the, the new generation could bring, learn from us, is to have a little bit more of that, the real love, you know, real proud of what we represent, you know, to to, to carry this in your soul. I think it's getting a little plastic to to. You give examples, you know yep. what I mean? I think that's part of why I want to do what I'm doing. I want to bring that history out. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's like, cool, yeah. Bring it out so people can hear this stuff. Because for me, I, I listen to this all the time when I yeah. talk people, and I love it. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, so yeah. It's the origin of what we're yeah. doing on a yeah. daily basis. That means that you really love what we do. Yeah. yeah. That's great because some people don't care. Yeah. They don't care. Yeah, they don't care. It's a hobby. They don't care. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I don't understand that, but that's how it is. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
me check something. I had all these notes and I ignored them. Yeah, the yeah, like it, man. Like I, I need to. I'm a talker, man. Especially yeah. I took a lot of coffee today. Was I didn't sleep well, so <laughs> before I came here, I got a double spread. <laughs> so like my tongue is like. <laughs> We did the same <laughs> thing. You did the same thing, right? We've been on the road since Tuesday, so we're oh, yeah, like, I bet uh, you guys died. Been training a couple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Oh, if I do stop again. One thing I was going to ask you uh -huh. about. So, you fought Hoyler in the finals of the Worlds, right? Yeah. So I was I was looking back on that. I think you had what five fights? Five, five fights. Five, that day, that day uh, I I had two semifinals. A lot of people say it was a final because they closed brackets with another guy. So that's why we went to TV. So in 96, it was in 96, the first time. This time was in 98. Yeah, there was five fights, that day, five matches that day. Uh, I remember that the first four were back to back. Like we had probably five to 10 minutes to rest in between them. 10 minute matches, right? 10 minute matches. Ten and this this day I didn't submit one guy, man. I had 10 minute matches, I had five 10 minute matches that day. It sucked. I couldn't <laughs> tap anybody. I normally tap people. Yeah. In 96, I tap people fast than 99 too, but then 98, yeah. fuck, 98. I mean, I did good. I, I was in really good shape. I was ready, but I couldn't finish any of the, of the guys, you know? So the first four were back to back. Really, really tough guys. I remember my semi-final was a war. I was really tired. And then, boom. I won my bracket, my whole bracket, and Hoyler won his own, his own bracket there. So, and I always knew that me and him would go in the final, but I was in really good shape. I was really confident. I was like, man, you know, those days that like nobody yeah. stops me today, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And then we stop. And then, O'Brien, you could come in and sit. Learn a bit, a bit about history here, bro. Come to you know, like history. See. Talk about history here all day. So, uh, so, and then like uh, there was the Brazilian TV, Sport TV, and then they they were like broadcasting live the finals of the Black Belt Worlds. So we had to wait. We we couldn't do like back to back like what. So the so it was four matches back to back. Break. It was like maybe like a three hour break or something because of TV, you know, I had to wait. So we're there, you know, I, I remember like I, I ate some orange, like, like oranges. Uh, it was no supplement at all. It was like, <laughs> a, I mean, there was, but you know, like, or the, I remember the uh, Carlinho saying like, orange is the best thing, but not the juice. I have to cut and do like this. And that's what I did, you know? Uh, and then I remember, man, it was one of the, best memories I have in my whole career. I was seated right before my match. I was seated, I remember that Salo Ribeiro was against uh, Fabio Gugel. It was the first one on the TV and right after was Mia Hoyler. And then after was uh, Feitosa versus Liu Vieira. So it would be like, they did uh, uh, Fabio Gugel and Salo first because uh, Gugel was doing the absolute two, the finals of the absolute, something like that. And I remember I was seated and there was, I had soccer was my main coach there. I had soccer next to me and somebody else uh, in Gordo. Soccer and Gordo next to me. And I was kind of, you know, getting ready and all that. And then like, on the other side, I saw Hoyler kind of like concentrating Hickson, kind of like doing this and talking to him. It was, you know, that that's a really cool thing that happened, yeah, right? That yeah. pretty thing. And then, man, it's like, I, I get goosebumps with this. I'm seated there and all of a sudden Carson comes. I swear to God, man, I'm not lying. I swear to God, this is true. He came and he goes like, hey, Drac, you looking amazing. You are the man, believe on yourself. You can do it. I believe you'll be the champion. You're looking better than him. Go for it. I swear to God, he said this to me, Carson, swear to God. My whole life. just lit you right up. Huh? And, I would, and right. because, because, I mean, Carson had a little bit of a rivalry with the other side and all that, you know. But man, like, before the finals, man, that gave me a fire that was like, shit, man, I, I, that's <laughs> on, it's on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, 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 was a, it was a good, really good match. Some people, it was back and forth. They, they gave him points for a takedown that was kind of debatable. Some people still think that I won. 
uh, it was back and forth. I, I'm not one of those guys. Oh, I will buy sure. Whatever, you know, it happened like it, 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 it's meant to be. You know, it wasn't meant for me to do. You know, I don't, I don't have any problem with that. But, uh, but yeah, and then like we have this. I had three ones, three reported, three, three uh, yeah, three times. I had a. This was '98, and then in '99, me and him got the semifinals. Uh, I won my. My, I was on the same bracket as him, and Leo Vieira was on the other bracket. So Leo won the whole other bracket, and then it was me and Hoyler in the semis. It was five. Uh, it was my fourth match this day too. It was five total too, if I made the finals. And uh, it was no points, no advantages, nothing. It was just ref's decision. It was a horrible match because we both were like really, kind of like, too much strategy, and we didn't let it go because we were kind of like you know, yeah. respecting too much each other. And they gave it to him. But it was like all standing because nobody wanted to pull guard. I was hoping he could pull guard. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. I would love to be on top of him. I never did. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so uh, it was the last time me and him competed. It was in 99, yeah, well, 96, 98, 99. Two semis, one final. But I never went against him, no gi though. Yeah. Well, no, never did. Was there a rivalry between them? The two teams back then, mm, man. Like with the with the guys from uh, from uh, Elio's side, from Gracie Maita. Not really. It wasn't. It wasn't. We used to actually, when I was a blue belt, we used to compete under the same flag. They used to do like qualifiers. So the Elio's guys would come to us, or we going to them, and then the the two best ones would go. So we would compete against their guys, like Oilers and Hokers and uh, Hickson's guys, and uh, and, and uh, the best two went, and then like there was a total split, you know. Kakashan was already doing his thing, but the whole Gracie Academy was still, still going kind of for the United front. But it didn't make sense, you know, because it was like a lot of talented people not able to compete. So, uh, so it wasn't like with the Hoyler, with the the Elio Gracie Society wasn't it wasn't bad. With Carson was, yeah, us and Carson was a little. I mean, it was really good friends of a lot of people there, but like, like. Uh, on the competition, he was on. Yeah, yeah, he real. was on. Remember, yeah. Hansel punched. Uh, <laughs> Hansel was a brown belt. I was, I was purple. I remember, competed that day too. And Hansel was going against Bebel Duarte. Bebel Duarte is one of the Carson's guys. He was bigger. Hansel was doing the absolute. And then uh, I like Bebel a lot. He's a good friend of mine, and we, we get along great. But Bebel was kind of like a. Kind of like a showman, kind of like to show off. And then like uh, he swept Hansel. He was way bigger than Hansel. He swept Hansel. Hansel was like featherweight. Hansel Brown Belt was featherweight. Swept Hansel. And then like they scramble and get, get back on top. And Hansel was kind of trying to shoot. And he was like sh stopping and doing like this on Hansel's face. Like, like, like yeah. this. And then all of a sudden Hansel, boom! <laughs> Punch him in the face that was on. And there was like all the castle guys and us. It was like really, but we were, like, we were friends of a lot of guys there. So it wasn't a full bra, but uh, it was a lot of situations like that. Well, shit, man. I feel we can't remember Carson taking everybody out of the tournament because he didn't agree with a referee's call. Took the uh, whole group out. Everybody, stop. Carson Gracie team out. Nobody competes anymore. So everybody left. It happened two times. I saw this two times. Really? Yes. One time in 88, one time in 93. Like, uh, he didn't agree with the call. This bullshit, you know what? Carson Gracie team is out. People are like ready to go. Carson, <laughs> like, out, out. Everybody out. Can't say no <laughs> yeah, way. yeah. Because it was like a yeah. fierce rivalry. I can't take it. Every, the teams wanted to beat the other. It was like, like like I told you, ninety four was three points, man. People like give their lives to win, you know. Yeah. That was, yeah. that was, but it was it was more like going back to your question. It was more the Carson guys and us with uh, with uh, the the, the Elio side wasn't too bad. I never had like a, a, a rivalry with Hoyler. I always respect him a lot. He was my hero, man. He was a absolute champion when I was like a little kid. Yeah. I used to go to the tournaments, I would see Hoyler beating like, uh, mm -hmm. this guy that beat Marcelo Berry, Castro Cardoso, Hoyler beat him. Yeah. And, and the guy was way bigger than Hoyler. Hoyler beat Peixotinho, beat Joe Moreira, all these guys were like double his size. And I was like, man, I want to be like that guy one day, you know? I was skinny too, so 
And then all of a sudden I'm facing him. <laughs> you what, know? What do you so, say to yourself when you you gotta win one more fight and you look across and there's your hero? You know what I mean? Like how do you it, get psyched up? It, that? Man, believe it or not, that's also a cool story. I had a little bit of a problem on separating the respect and the and the admiration that I have for him as a fan and turn to him into an opponent. I think the day that I did better was because of Carson, because he put he fire on you. Up, yeah. I think maybe he didn't tell me that he wouldn't be that good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I actually went to, to see a psychologist because I was like focused on being world champion, black belt, adult. It's, I, for three years, that's all I thought about. Or be a world champion. And, and while I was on the big, so while they won four in a row, so it wasn't just me, he beat like, he beat Leo, he beat Chowlin, he beat Leo yeah. Santos, he beat uh, John Hockey, he beat uh, Soka, he beat everybody, it wasn't just me, because Euler was the man back then. But I always believed that, man, I want to be the champion. If I want to be the champion, I have to beat him, because I mean, there's no other way. I, I will yeah. go against him until something happens, you know? And then I went to the psychologist and it was tough for me yeah. to, to differentiate. Yeah, it was like, uh, in 99, I was ready mentally. I was kind of like, I started to see him kind of like an opponent that I really want to beat. Yeah. But uh, I was so hungry to win that I didn't let it go. And he either. If you watch the match, it was the most boring match ever did in my life. Yeah. He was just like standing. I was training a lot of judo when I would take him down. He would take me down. We're breaking. Uh, nothing happened. Pretty much nothing. Just a stand up match. Just stand up match. Too much respect on both sides. Yeah, I mean, nobody wants to make a mistake. We both knew that whoever was on the bottom would be in trouble. It was always known <laughs> for me and him. I knew how good he was on top, and he knew that me on top of him would end up his back. So he said, I'm not going to be in the bottom. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going either. You pulled guard. So no, you pulled guard. <laughs> I, 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 I pulled him to my guard. At the end of that match in 98, because the ref gave the two points that I think there really wasn't. And I was losing my points, so I said, right, fuck it, so I have to try, you know. So I pulled and didn't pass, I tried to attack. It was it, you know. So my story with him was cool, you know. Uh, we got along great, I always got along with him really well. I have all the, the respect for him. And, uh, and yeah, man, you know, like, I am who I am a lot because of him. Because, yeah. yeah, because the years that I I trained thinking about him made me better, hundred percent. Yeah. If he wasn't a guy like that, probably I wouldn't be where I am right now because I wouldn't dedicate so much as I did. Yeah. That's why I always tell my students: no better place to be than having somebody you're chasing, and yeah. somebody chasing you. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Hundred percent. Somebody nipping at your butt and someone you're trying to. hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, and it's funny that me and him we we retired on world championships on the same years. And uh, I was sure that I would face him in Abu Dhabi. Because when I was invited, I got invited in 99 because uh, I was the, the, the silver medalist in the world. Hoyler was the world champion and the second place was me, so they invited both of us. I was very excited, you know, yeah, to, to, to go and, and beat him. So, but the, the way they did the brackets, they, they started they do this all the time now, but they put teammates on the first uh, uh, stages of the match. So I went against a Japanese guy, I beat him by points, but like, no problem. My second match was Hosoka, my best friend. They did it for purpose. Yeah. And back in the day, nowadays, I think like competing against a friend is no big deal at all, it's evolution. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, it was like, no way. Yeah. If he, the guy's really your brother, no more crazy. No such thing. And then we did, and I lost. But we had to go. That was the worst thing. We had to go because otherwise, uh, if I didn't go, the Japanese guy would come and we had to compete against him. And I wanted him to, to try to, to go to Oilers because it was either me or him going to Oilers. Sure enough, it was him. And they lost on the final, but you know, it's tough. And I missed my chance. It's <laughs> tough, man. Yeah. 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 Different times though too, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's way different. It's yeah. crazy to think of like all that was going on in the nineties, you know. Because Yeah, this was in ninety nine when I went to the ACC where I got invited. And then I remember I got the email and the English I was okay in English, but I didn't understand really well. 
And I remember I got this email from this guy, Guy Nevins, which is the main or the main guy there in ADCC. Oh, would like to invite you to compete. I was like, really? You sure? And then I replied in a bad English. I say, ADCC, no gi, the one. So I say, yes, sir, that's it. We want to, we look forward to have you here. And I didn't know what look forward it was. I was like, I remember asking my American friend, uh, American uh, student, what is, what does it mean looking forward? Looking what? I didn't understand what it was, you know? But uh, yeah, it was good times, good times. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So cool. Well, earlier we were talking about Carlinos, you're saying yeah. he can see the future. You yeah. know, like he's good at that. Uh -huh. He's good on that. What, what's the future look like for jiu-jitsu? Man, I'm not like him, let me tell you that. So <laughs> I'm not a visionary like him. But what I see now, uh, what I've been seeing and what I've been feeling is that the big stages, the competition, the money, thank God is there and it's still going to grow. Like I said, you know, like the way Master Carlos said back in the day, the way that people uh, compete in jiu-jitsu will make money will be pay-per-view format. And he sure enough, he is. Yeah. Like with the full black yeah, subscriptions yeah. and all that. So he was right. And uh, and I think there's no way back now. I think it's going to go to a point that uh, it's, there's more money involved and more media. We're probably going to be in open TV soon. I, I really think that there's no stop for that now. But I think that now, like the biggest growth for us in Jiu Jitsu is to make sure that we get the millions of people that nobody sees to experience a beautiful art that we have. You know, yeah. the people that nobody knows, the people that are all over the world that will change their lives for the better. And we can be part of that. You know, yeah. I, I'm more interested nowadays to 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 be part of somebody's uh, uh, life getting better. Yeah. People who are insecure about themselves get insecure. People who are socially oppressed being, being like overcome that. People with like some, any kind of disabil disabilities, we, we adapt and make them, them, them better, they, they, they happier, healthier. You know, that that's the kind of thing that uh, I think Jiu Jitsu will bring more and more now because it's already mainstream, you know, it was tough back in the day. It was only the, the, the animals wanted to do it. I mean, I'm, an, I'm, I'm saying I'm an animal, you know? So, uh, so uh, uh, that's what I think the future of Jiu Jitsu is. I think it's going to be something that will be uh, a way that people will improve their lives. Yeah. I agree. And nobody cares if they're going to be champions, they're going to be badasses, they're going to, you know, it's just they're going to be better husbands, better brothers, better friends, better uh, professionals, you know, they're going to look people in the eye without being scared of them. Yeah. That's priceless, man. That's I better than, than, than the matter. That's a huge you know? reward as a coach. For you sure. To see somebody for the better. Man, like a kid that I grew up with me, it was like, a, he calls me dad still in Brazil, uh, Felipe Pena's brother. Chushiko. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. his brother? Yeah. Chushiko is his brother. He's all the brother. That was yeah. his brother. That's his brother. Chushiko is brother. Chushiko is like, when, when the, at his father's day in Brazil, he puts his biological father, uh, Felipe's father, which is his stepdad, and me. You know? This kid, badass in Jiu-Jitsu, really good. He was world champion. But nowadays, he has a, a fund like a, one of those Wall Street kind of thing, a fund in Brazil that is the third biggest in Brazil has billions under him. So he's like a billionaire. So he still trains, of course, but he said that if it wasn't for Jiu Jitsu, man, the kid was socially oppressed. The kid was like bullied at school, didn't talk, quiet. His nickname is Tio Chico, means Uncle Fester. You know, the Uncle Fester for the Adams family? Because <clears throat> super ugly guy, you know? So, yeah. and look at the guy now, he has a, two beautiful kids. He got married to a beautiful model, beautiful girl, he has a family, millionaire, billionaire. And and he still said, man, if it wasn't for Jiu Jitsu, I wasn't be there, yeah. you know? So this is like a success story, but that people that are not gonna be a billionaire, but they're gonna look people in the eye. That's right. Right? 
Yep. And the people that joined the, the, the school in Brazil, I remember there was a kid, his name of this kid is Eitor. I couldn't hear his voice for six months. I didn't know how his voice sounded because the kid didn't talk. He didn't talk. He was like, hey, Eitor, how are you doing? Everything okay? You want to get some water? And then, man, after six months, I find, hey, Eitor, what's up? I already expect he goes like, Hey, professor, how you doing? He's like, whoa, man, your voice sounds normal. I felt like you didn't have a tongue or something making fun of him because, oh. and then the kid, like, open. Yeah. You see, like, from this from the show, yeah, came out. to this. Yeah. And then, like, it was the best, one of the best days when I was on the mall, and I saw him holding a girl's hand and walking on the mall. I was like, man, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. You know, yeah. and I know for a fact it was because of jujitsu. You know what I mean? Yeah. That transformed the kid. You know, so that that that's what I think. Like uh, the future holds. Yeah, I think. I love it. You know, the that's better than anything. Yeah. My opinion. We were we were talking on the plane ride down here. I was telling him my favorite picture. Right, I yeah. showed it to him. I had a kid just like you're talking about. He came huh? to my gym. He couldn't look me in the eye. Yeah, he shook yeah. hand like this. Yeah, wouldn't talk to anybody. I would talk to him. And ask him questions he wouldn't even answer me. yeah he would just stare yeah. at me like yeah. he, like he couldn't respond you know yeah within six months this kid's hugging everybody in the gym yeah. he's training yeah took him to his first competition he had the toughest match his first match like i thought this other kid was gonna kill him uh -huh. he, he refused to tap like his mom is standing right next oh to me and she's just like biting her fingers <laughs> he's all neck crank you know but he gets out and the other kid was just like, you could see in his face, like, I can't believe that this kid didn't just tap to this, yeah. you know? And yeah. then he gets his back and he chokes him. Oh, and, man. And in the middle of the match, the ref's raising his hand. He's just like, yeah. You know, just like, yeah. and I got a picture of it right there. And that's, like, that that's, is my favorite picture. That's right it, there, because you know? that's like yeah. the real meaning of, I made it. Yeah, I did it. I can do whatever I want. Exactly. I Nobody can, can stop me. That's right. The world is mine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Man, for a for a pressed kid, for a kid like that, this is big. This is like life yeah. and death. Yeah. How many people kill themselves? If they train jujitsu, maybe they couldn't. Yeah. They wouldn't because you would help them. For you know, sure. that that's 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 what turns me on nowadays. Yeah. Me too. You know what I mean? With you. Yeah. More than you know, I mean it's always good to make a champion or a champion. You know, like you're a champion now, a couple of years you're not a champion anymore. That's right. Happens to all of us, you know what I mean? That's what Silvio says. He says, you know when you're you're a champion? When you get that gold medal, then you get off the podium, you're not a champion. You're not a champion anymore, he's right. <laughs> and that, that's over. He's it's right, I mean, we, we, we're proud and I'm proud of what I did, and, you know, but, uh, but honestly, man, like, uh, if you bring a lot of value to that, there's something wrong with you. But this is just a this is a small part for me. Very small part, right? You know, this is a small part. Yeah, there's a whole lot going on outside of that. Yeah. No, I love it. I agree with you. That's that's the future right there, changing lives. Changing lives, you know? building people up. The rest is being taken care of. You know? It's being taken care of. Like it's on the right path. Look at I mean, like I would joke about flow grap flow grappling, but Man, there's like other pay-per-views, as UFC fight pass, there's all the like events that people are paying money to watch. In Brazil, that uh, BJJ stars in Brazil, man, do you see how how many buys they have got on the last time? Yeah. Crazy, they need millions. Yeah, big money. They paid 100,000 to Felipe, they won. So I'm, I'm glad they made money, otherwise they'll be broke. But uh, man, they made a lot of money. It's of course, production costs a lot. And, yeah, but still, man, yeah. who could think about that? Like, more than a million in grappling jujitsu? Oh. A victory, right? Yeah. Just the beginning. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. You know, it's, it's, I'm not worried about that. We're good, you know? Yeah. I wish I was just a little younger when I was in my prime to make that money. <laughs> I didn't make shit competing, fighting shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you like, I mean, like a couple it. of times that I made some money, like when a Valigi and a, and Royce fought, that Valid put Royce to sleep on, yeah. uh, on the arena. I competed on the preliminaries there. And I remember I got paid on that one. And I got paid probably like, if I want to compare now, probably like a thousand dollars. I was so happy. 
was like, man, a thousand dollars. It's a quick beat. That's awesome. I was like telling my mom, I was like, man, a thousand dollars. I made a thousand dollars, man. I kid like this boy, yeah. Ryan, kid like Felipe, they make like a hundred thousand. So yeah. Easy. They make lots of money. Yeah. And then yeah. they sell their DVDs. And their yeah, 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 yeah. Cash in there. That's it. I'm glad though, it's good. Yeah, it is. It's good. It's good for everybody. Man. It's good for us because it grows the whole sport. Yes, you know? for sure. So, schools grow, more students, it's good. More lives changed. For sure. And that's the way, right, Brian? Yes, Change sir. people's lives. For the better, yes, sir. For the better. 100%. Yeah. For the better. Well, I feel like I could sit and talk to you all night. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've, yeah, yeah. We've and I'm a talker, while, too. So yeah. I really appreciate you doing this. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's appreciate awesome. it, bro. Thank appreciate you so it. much. Thank you.